This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by C. J. Plog. Chapter Twelve of the Book of Jasher. And when the king heard the words of Abram, he ordered him to be put into prison. And Abram was ten days in prison. And at the end of those days, the king ordered that all the kings, princes, and governors of different provinces and the sages should come before him. And they sat before him. And Abram was still in the house of confinement. And the king said to the princes and sages, Have you heard what Abram the son of Tira has done to his father? Thus has he done to him. And I ordered him to be brought before me. And thus has he spoken. His heart did not misgive him. Neither did he stir in my presence. And behold, now he is confined in the prison. And therefore decide what judgment is due to this man who reviled the king, who spoke and did all the things that you heard. And they all answered the king, saying. The man who revileth the king should be hanged upon a tree. But having done all the things that he said, and having despised our gods, he must therefore be burned to death. For this is the law in this matter. If it pleaseth the king to do this, let him order his servants, kindle a fire, both night and day, in thy brick furnace, and then we will cast this man into it. And the king did so. And he commanded his servants that they should prepare a fire for three days and three nights in the king's furnace that is, in Castum, and the king ordered them to take Abram from prison and bring him out to be burned. And all the king's servants, princes, lords, governors, and judges, and all the inhabitants of the land, about nine hundred thousand men, stood opposite the furnace to see Abram. And all the women and little ones crowded upon the roofs and towers to see what was doing with Abram, and they all stood together at a distance, and there was not a man left that did not come on that day to behold the scene. And when Abram was come, the conjurers of the king and the sages saw Abram, and they cried out to the king, saying, Our sovereign lord, surely this is the man whom we know to have been the child at whose birth the great star swallowed the four stars, which we declared to the king now fifty years since. And behold, now his father has also transgressed thy command, and mocked thee by bringing thee another child, which thou didst kill. And when the king heard their words, he was exceedingly wroth, and he ordered Terah to be brought before him. And the king said, Hast thou heard what the conjurers have spoken? Now tell me truly, how didst thou? And if thou shalt speak truth, thou shalt be acquitted. And seeing that the king's anger was so much kindled, Terah said to the king, My lord and king, thou hast heard the truth, and what the sages have spoken is right. And the king said, how couldst thou do this thing, to transgress my orders, and to give me a child that thou didst not beget, and to take value for him? And Terah answered the king, Because my tender feelings were excited for my son at that time, and I took a son of my handmaid, and I brought him to the king. And the king said, Who advised thee to this? Tell me, do not hide aught from me, and then thou shalt not die. And Terah was greatly terrified in the king's presence, and he said to the king, It was Haran, my eldest son, who advised me to do this. And Haran was in those days that Abram was born, two and thirty years old. But Haran did not advise his father to anything, for Terah said this to the king in order to deliver his soul from the king, for he feared greatly. And the king said to Terah, Haran, thy son, who advised thee to this shall die through fire with Abram, for the sentence of death is upon him for having rebelled against the king's desire in doing this thing. And Haran at that time felt inclined to follow the ways of Abram, but he kept it within himself. And Haran said in his heart, Behold, now the king has seized Abram on account of these things which Abram did, and it shall come to pass that if Abram prevail over the king, I will follow him. But if the king prevail, I will go after the king. And when Terah had spoken this to the king concerning Haran his son, the king ordered Haran to be seized with Abram. And they brought them both, Abram and Haran his brother, to cast them into the fire. And all the inhabitants of the land, and the king's servants and princes, and all the women and little ones were there standing that day over them. And the king's servants took Abram and his brother, and they stripped them of all their clothes, excepting their lower garments which were upon them. And they bound their hands and feet with linen cords, and the servants of the king lifted them up and cast them both into the furnace. And the Lord loved Abram, and he had compassion over him. And the Lord came down and delivered Abram from the fire, and he was not burned.
but all the cords with which they bound him were burned while abram remained and walked about in the fire and haran died when they had cast him into the fire and he was burned to ashes for his heart was not perfect with the lord and those men who cast him into the fire the flame of fire spread over them and they were burned and twelve men of them died and abram walked in the midst of the fire three days and three nights and all the servants of the king saw him walking in the fire and they came and told the king saying behold we have seen abram walking about in the midst of the fire and even the lower garments which are upon him are not burned but the cord with which he was bound is burned and when the king heard their words his heart fainted and he would not believe them so he sent other faithful princes to see this matter and they went and saw it and told it to the king and the king rose to go and see it and he saw abram walking to and fro in the midst of the fire and he saw haran's body burned and the king wondered greatly and the king ordered abram to be taken out from the fire and his servants approached to take him out and they could not for the fire was round about and the flame ascending toward them from the furnace and the king's servants fled from it and the king rebuked them saying make haste and bring abram out of the fire that you shall not die and the servants of the king again approached to bring abram out and the flames came upon them and burned their faces so that eight of them died and when the king saw that his servants could not approach the fire lest they should be burned the king called to abram o servant of the god who is in heaven go forth from amidst the fire come hither before me and abram hearkened to the voice of the king and he went forth from the fire and he came and stood before the king and when abram came out the king and all his servants saw abram coming before the king with his lower garments upon him for they were not burned but the cord with which he was bound was burned and the king said to abram how is it that thou wast not burned in the fire and abram said to the king the god of heaven and earth in whom i trust and who has all in his power he delivered me from the fire into which thou didst cast me and haran the brother of abram was burned to ashes and they sought for his body and they found it consumed and haran was eighty-two years old when he died in the fire of Castim. And the king, princes, and inhabitants of the land, seeing that Abram was delivered from the fire, they came and bowed down to Abram. And Abram said to them, Do not bow down to me, but bow down to the God of the world who made you, and serve him, and go in his ways, for it is he who delivered me from out of this fire, and it is he who created the souls and spirits of all men, and formed man in his mother's womb, and brought him forth into the world and it is he who will deliver those who trust in him from all pain and this thing seemed very wonderful in the eyes of the king and princes that abram was saved from the fire and that haran was burned and the king gave abram many presents and he gave him his two head servants from the king's house the name of the one was onai and the name of the other was eliezer and all the king's princes and servants gave abram many gifts of silver and gold and pearl and the king and his princes sent him away, and he went in peace. And Abram went forth from the king in peace, and many of the king's servants followed him, and about three hundred men joined him. And Abram returned on that day and went to his father's house, he and the men that followed him. And Abram served the Lord his God all the days of his life, and he walked in his ways and followed his law. And from that day forward Abram inclined the hearts of the sons of men to serve the Lord. And at that time Nahor and Abram took unto themselves wives, the daughters of their brother Haran. The wife of Nahor was Milcah, and the name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And Sarai, wife of Abram, was barren. She had no offspring in those days. And at the expiration of two years from Abram's going out of the fire, that is in the fifty-second year of his life, behold, King Nimrod sat in Babel upon the throne. And the king fell asleep and dreamed that he was standing with his troops and hosts in a valley opposite the king's furnace. And he lifted up his eyes and saw a man in the likeness of Abram coming forth from the furnace, and that he came and stood before the king with his drawn sword, and then sprang to the king with his sword, when the king fled from the man, for he was afraid. And while he was running, the man threw an egg upon the king's head, and the egg became a great river. And the king dreamed that all his troops sank in that river and died. 
and the king took flight with three men who were before him, and he escaped. And the king looked at these men, and they were clothed in princely dresses as the garments of kings, and had the appearance and majesty of kings. And while they were running, the river again turned to an egg before the king, and there came forth from the egg a young bird which came before the king, and flew at his head, and plucked out the king's eye. And the king was grieved at the sight, and he awoke out of his sleep, and his spirit was agitated, and he felt a great terror. And in the morning the king rose from the couch in fear, and he ordered all the wise men and magicians to come before him, when the king related his dream to them. And a wise servant of the king, whose name was Anakai, answered the king, saying, this is nothing else but the evil of Abram and his seed which will spring up against my lord and king in the latter days. And behold, the day will come when Abram and his seed and the children of his household will war with my king, and they will smite all the king's hosts and his troops. And as to what thou hast said concerning three men which thou didst see like unto thyself, and which did escape, this means that only thou wilt escape with three kings from the kings of the earth who will be with thee in battle. And that which thou sawest of the river which turned to an egg as at first, and the young bird plucking out thine eye, this means nothing else but the seed of Abram which will slay the king in latter days. This is my king's dream, and this is its interpretation, and the dream is true, and the interpretation which thy servant has given thee is right. Now therefore, my king, surely thou knowest that it is now fifty-two years since thy sages saw this at the birth of Abram, and if my king will suffer Abram to live in the earth, it will be to the injury of my lord and king. For all the days that Abram liveth, neither thou nor thy kingdom will be established. For this was known formerly at his birth. And why will not my king slay him, that his evil may be kept from thee in latter days? And Nimrod hearkened to the voice of Anukai, and he sent some of his servants in secret to go and seize Abram, and bring him before the king to suffer death. And Eliezer, Abram's servant, whom the king had given him, was at that time in the presence of the king, and he heard what Anukai had advised the king, and what the king had said to cause Abram's death. And Eliezer said to Abram, Hasten, rise up and save thy soul, that thou mayest not die through the hands of the king, for thus did he see in a dream concerning thee, and thus did Anukai interpret it, and thus also did Anukai advise the king concerning thee. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Eliezer, and Abram hastened and ran for safety to the house of Noah and his son Shem. And he concealed himself there, and found a place of safety. And the king's servants came to Abram's house to seek him, but they could not find him, and they searched throughout the country, and he was not to be found. And they went and searched in every direction, and he was not to be met with. And when the king's servants could not find Abram, they returned to the king, but the king's anger against Abram was stilled, as they did not find him, and the king drove from his mind this matter concerning Abram. And Abram was concealed in Noah's house for one month until the king had forgotten this matter, but Abram was still afraid of the king. And Terah came to see Abram his son secretly in the house of Noah, and Terah was very great in the eyes of the king. And Abram said to his father, Dost thou not know that the king thinketh to slay me, and to annihilate my name from the earth by the advice of his wicked counselors? Now whom hast thou here, and what hast thou in this land? Arise, let us go together to the land of Canaan, that we may be delivered from his hand, lest thou perish also through him in the latter days. Dost thou not know, or hast thou not heard, that it is not through love that Nimrod giveth thee all his honor, but it is only for his benefit that he bestoweth all of this good upon thee. And if he do unto thee greater good than this, surely these are only vanities of the world, for wealth and riches cannot avail in the day of wrath and anger. Now therefore hearken to my voice, and let us arise and go to the land of Canaan, out of the reach of injury from Nimrod. And serve thou the Lord who created thee in the earth, and it will be well with thee. And cast away all the vain things which thou pursuest. And Abram ceased to speak when Noah and his son Shem answered Terah, saying, True is the word which Abram has said unto thee. And Terah hearkened to the voice of his son Abram, and Terah did all that Abram said, for this was from the Lord that the king should not cause Abram's death.
End of chapter 12「Chapter thirteen of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter thirteen. And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, the wife of his son Abram, and all the souls of his household, and went with them from Ur Kastim to go to the land of Canaan. And when they came as far as the land of Haran, they remained there, for it was exceeding good land for pasture, and of sufficient extent for those who accompanied them. And the people of the land of Haran saw that Abram was good and upright with God and men, and that the Lord his God was with him. And some of the people of the land of Haran came and joined Abram, and he taught them the instruction of the Lord and his ways. And those men remained with Abram in his house, and they adhered to him. And Abram remained in the land three years, and at the expiration of three years the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee forth from ur Kastim, and delivered thee from the hands of thine enemies. And now therefore if thou wilt hearken to my voice, and keep my commandments, my statutes, and my laws, then will I cause thy enemies to fall before thee, and I will multiply thy seed like the stars of heaven, and I will send my blessing upon all the works of thy hands, and thou shalt lack nothing. Arise now, take thy wife and all belonging to thee, and go to the land of Canaan, and remain there, and I will there be unto thee for a god, and I will bless thee. And Abram rose and took his wife and all belonging to him, and he went to the land of Canaan, as the Lord had told him. And Abram was fifty years old when he went from Haran. And Abram came to the land of Canaan, and dwelt in the midst of the city, and he there pitched his tent amongst the children of Canaan, inhabitants of the land. And the Lord appeared to Abram when he came to the land of Canaan, and he said to him, This is the land which I give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee for ever, and I will make thy seed like the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed for an inheritance all the lands which thou seest. And Abram built an altar in the place where God had spoken to him, and Abram there called upon the name of the Lord. At the time, at the end of three years of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, in that year Noah died, which was the fifty-eighth year of the life of Abram. And all the days that Noah lived were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, he, his wife, and all belonging to him, and all those that accompanied him, together with those that joined him from the people of the land. But Nabor... Abram's brother, and Terah his father, and Lot the son of Haran, and all belonging to them, dwelt in Haran. In the fifth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all the cities of the plain, revolted from the power of Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, for all the kings of the cities of the plain had served Chedorlaomer for twelve years, and given him a yearly tax. But in those days, in the thirteenth year, they rebelled against him. And in the tenth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, there was a war between Nimrod, king of Shinar, and Chedorlaomer, king of Elam. And Nimrod came to fight with Chedorlaomer and to subdue him. For Chedorlaomer was at that time one of the princes of the hosts of Nimrod. And when all the people at the tower were dispersed, and those that remained were also scattered upon the face of the earth, Chedorlaomer went to the land of Elam, and reigned over it, and rebelled against his lord. And in those days when Nimrod saw that the cities of the plain had rebelled, he came with pride and anger to war with Chedorlaomer, and Nimrod assembled all his princes and subjects, about seven hundred thousand men, and went against Chedorlaomer. And Chedorlaomer went out to meet him with five thousand men, and they prepared for battle in the valley of Babel, which is between Elam and Shinar. And all those kings fought there, and Nimrod and his people were smitten before the people of Chedorlaomer, and there fell from Nimrod's men about six hundred thousand, and Mardan the king's son fell amongst them. And Nimrod fled and returned in shame and disgrace to his land, and he was under subjection to Chedorlaomer for a long time. And Chedorlaomer returned to his land, and sent princes of his host to the kings that dwelt around him, to Arioch king of Eliser, and to Tidal king of Goyim, 
and made a covenant with them, and they were all obedient to his commands. And it was in the fifteenth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, which is the seventieth year of the life of Abram, and the Lord appeared to Abram in that year, and he said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee out from Ur Kastim to give thee this land for an inheritance. Now therefore walk before me and be perfect and keep my commands. For to thee and to thy seed I will give this land for an inheritance from the river Mitzraim unto the great river Euphrates. And thou shalt come to thy fathers in peace and in good age, and the fourth generation shall return here in this land and shall inherit it forever. And Abram built an altar and he called upon the name of the Lord who appeared to him and he brought up sacrifices upon the altar to the Lord. At that time Abram returned and went to Haran to see his father and mother and his father's household, and Abram and his wife and all belonging to him returned to Haran. And Abram dwelt in Haran five years. And many of the people of Haran, about seventy-two men, followed Abram, and Abram taught them the instruction of the Lord and his ways, and he taught them to know the Lord. In those days the Lord appeared to Abram in Haran, and he said to him, Behold, I spoke unto thee these twenty years back, saying, Go forth from thy land, from thy birthplace, and from thy father's house, to the land which I have shown thee, to give it to thee, and to thy children. For there in that land will I bless thee, and make thee a great nation, and make thy name great, and in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. Now therefore arise, go forth from this place, thou, thy wife, and all belonging to thee, also every one born in thy house, and all the souls thou hast made in Haran, and bring them out with thee from here, and rise to return to the land of Canaan. And Abram arose, and took his wife Sarai, and all belonging to him, and all that were born to him in his house, and the souls which they had made in Haran, and they came out to go to the land of Canaan. And Abram went and returned to the land of Canaan according to the word of the Lord, and Lot, the son of his brother Haran, went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he went forth from Haran to return to the land of Canaan. And he came to the land of Canaan according to the word of the Lord to Abram, and he pitched his tent, and he dwelt in the plain of Mamre. And with him was Lot, his brother's son, and all belonging to him. And the Lord again appeared to Abram and said, To thy seed will I give this land. And he there built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him, which is still to this day in the plains of Mamre. End of chapter 13of the Book of Jasher. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 14 In those days there was in the land of Shinar a wise man who had understanding in all wisdom, and of a beautiful appearance, but he was poor and indigent. His name was Rakayan, and he was hard set to support himself. And he resolved to go to Egypt to Oswiris, the son of Anam, king of Egypt, to show the king his wisdom, for perhaps he might find grace in his sight to raise him up and give him maintenance. And Rakayan did so. And when Rakayan came to Egypt, he asked the inhabitants of Egypt concerning the king, and the inhabitants of Egypt told him the custom of the king of Egypt, for it was then the custom of the king of Egypt that he went from his royal palace and was seen abroad only one day in the year, and after that the king would return to his palace to remain there. And on the day when the king went forth, he passed judgment in the land, and every one having a suit came before the king that day to obtain his request. And when Rikan heard of the custom in Egypt, and that he could not come into the presence of the king, he grieved greatly and was very sorrowful. And in the evening Rikayon went out and found a house in ruins, formerly a bakehouse in Egypt, and he abided there all night in bitterness of soul, and pinched with hunger, and sleep was removed from his eyes. And Rikayon considered within himself what he should do in the town until the king made his appearance, and how he might maintain himself there. And he rose in the morning and walked about and met in his way those who sold vegetables and various sorts of seeds with which they supplied the inhabitants. And Rikayon wished to do the same in order to get a maintenance in the city, but he was unacquainted with the custom of the people, 
and he was like a blind man among them. And he went and obtained vegetables to sell them for his support. And the rabble assembled about him and ridiculed him and took his vegetables from him and left him nothing. And he rose up from there in bitterness of soul and went sighing to the bakehouse in which he had remained all the night before, and he slept there the second night. And on that night again he reasoned within himself how he could save himself from starvation, and he devised a scheme how to act. And he rose up in the morning and acted ingeniously, and went and hired thirty strong men of the rabble, carrying their war instruments in their hands, and he led them to the top of the Egyptian sepulchre, and he placed them there. And he commanded them, saying, Thus saith the king, Strengthen yourselves, and be valiant men, and let no man be buried here until two hundred pieces of silver be given, and then he may be buried. And those men did according to the order of Rikaon to the people of Egypt the whole of that year. And in eight months' time Rikaon and his men gathered great riches of silver and gold, and Rikaon took a great quantity of horses and other animals, and he hired more men, and he gave them horses, and they remained with him. And when the year came around at the time the king went forth into the town, all the inhabitants of Egypt assembled together to speak to him concerning the work of Rikaon and his men. And the king went forth on the appointed day, and all the Egyptians came before him and cried unto him, saying, May the king live for ever. What is this thing thou doest in the town to thy servants, not to suffer a dead body to be buried until so much silver and gold be given? Was there ever the like unto this done in the whole earth from the days of former kings, yea, even from the days of Adam unto this day, that the dead should not be buried only for a set price? We know it to be the custom of kings to take a yearly tax from the living, but thou dost not only do this, but from the dead also thou exactest a tax day by day. Now, O king, we can no more bear this, for the whole city is ruined on this account, and dost thou not know it? And when the king heard all that they had spoken, he was very wroth, and his anger burned within him at this affair, for he had known nothing of it. And the king said, Who and where is he that dares to do this wicked thing in my land without my command? Surely you will tell me. And they told him all the works of Rikaon and his men, and the king's anger was aroused, and he ordered Rikaon and his men to be brought before him. And Rikaon took about a thousand children, sons and daughters, and clothed them in silk and embroidery, and he set them upon horses, and sent them to the king by means of his men. And he also took a great quantity of silver and gold and precious stones, and a strong and beautiful horse as a present for the king, with which he came before the king and bowed down to the earth before him. And the king, his servants, and all the inhabitants of Egypt wondered at the work of Rikaon, and they saw his riches and the present that he had brought to the king. And it greatly pleased the king, and he wondered at it. And when Rikaon sat before him, the king asked him concerning all his works. And Rikaon spoke all his words wisely before the king, his servants, and all the inhabitants of Egypt. And when the king heard the words of Rikaon and his wisdom, Rikaon found grace in his sight, and he met with grace and kindness from all the servants of the king and from all the inhabitants of Egypt, on account of his wisdom and excellent speeches, and from that time they loved him exceedingly. And the king answered and said to Rikaon, Thy name shall no more be called Rikaon, but Pharaoh shall be thy name, since thou didst exact attacks from the dead. And he called his name Pharaoh. And the king and his subjects loved Rikaon for his wisdom, and they consulted with all the inhabitants of Egypt to make him prefect under the king. And all the inhabitants of Egypt and its wise men did so, and it was made a law in Egypt. And they made Rikaon Pharaoh prefect under Oswiris king of Egypt. And Rikaon Pharaoh governed over Egypt, daily administering justice to the whole city. But Oswiris the king would judge the people of the land one day in the year, when he went out to make his appearance. And Rikaon Pharaoh cunningly usurped the government of Egypt, and he exacted a tax from all the inhabitants of Egypt. And all the inhabitants of Egypt greatly loved Rikaon Pharaoh, and they made a decree to call every king that should reign over them and their seed in Egypt, Pharaoh. Therefore all the kings that reigned in Egypt from that time forward were called Pharaoh, unto this day. 
End of chapter 14 Chapter 15 of the Book of Jasher This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 15 and in that year there was a heavy famine throughout the land of Egypt, and the inhabitants of the land could not remain on account of the famine, for it was very grievous. And Abram and all belonging to him rose and went down to Egypt on account of the famine, and when they were at the brook Mitzraim, they remained there some time to rest from the fatigue of the road. And Abram and Sarai were walking at the border of the brook Mitzraim, and Abram beheld his wife Sarai, that she was very beautiful. And Abram said to his wife Sarai, Since God has created thee with such a beautiful countenance, I am afraid of the Egyptians, lest they should slay me and take thee away, for the fear of God is not in these places. Surely then thou shalt do this. Say thou art my sister to all that may ask thee, in order that it may be well with me, and that we may live and not be put to death. And Abram commanded the same to all those that came with him to Egypt on account of the famine. Also his nephew Lot he commanded, saying, If the Egyptians ask thee concerning Sarai, say she is the sister of Abram. And yet with all these orders Abram did not put confidence in them, but he took Sarai and placed her in a chest and concealed it amongst their vessels. For Abram was greatly concerned about Sarai on account of the wickedness of the Egyptians. And Abram and all belonging to him rose up from the brook Mitzraim and came to Egypt. And they had scarcely entered the gates of the city when the guards stood up to them, saying, Give tithe to the king from what you have, and then you may come into the town. And Abram and those that were with him did so. And Abram with the people that were with him came to Egypt. And when they came, they brought the chest in which Sarai was concealed, and the Egyptians saw the chest. And the king's servants approached Abram, saying, What hast thou here in this chest which we have not seen? Now open thou the chest, and give tithe to the king of all that it contains. And Abram said, This chest I will not open, but all you demand upon it I will give. And Pharaoh's officers answered Abram, saying, It is a chest of precious stones, give us the tenth thereof. Abram said, All that you desire I will give, but you must not open the chest. And the king's officers pressed Abram, and they reached the chest and opened it with force, and they saw, and behold, a beautiful woman was in the chest. And when the officers of the king beheld Sarai, they were struck with admiration at her beauty. And all the princes and servants of Pharaoh assembled to see Sarai, for she was very beautiful. And the king's officers ran and told Pharaoh all that they had seen, and they praised Sarai to the king. And Pharaoh ordered her to be brought, and the woman came before the king. And Pharaoh beheld Sarai, and she pleased him exceedingly, and he was struck with her beauty. And the king rejoiced greatly on her account, and made presents to those who brought him the tidings concerning her. And the woman was then brought to Pharaoh's house. And Abram grieved on account of his wife, and he prayed to the Lord to deliver her from the hands of Pharaoh. And Sarai also prayed at that time, and said, O Lord God, thou didst tell my lord Abram to go from his land, and from his father's house to the land of Canaan, and thou didst promise to do well with him if he would perform thy commands. Now behold, we have done that which thou didst command us, and we left our land and our families, and we went to a strange land, and to a people whom we have not known before. And we came to this land to avoid the famine, and this evil accident has befallen me. Now therefore, O Lord God, deliver us and save us from the hand of this oppressor, and do well with me for the sake of thy mercy. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Sarai, and the Lord sent an angel to deliver Sarai from the power of Pharaoh. And the king came and sat before Sarai, and behold, an angel of the Lord was standing over them. And he appeared to Sarai and said to her, Do not fear, for the Lord has heard thy prayer. And the king approached Sarai and said to her, What is that man to thee who brought thee hither? And she said, He is my brother. And the king said, It is incumbent upon us to make him great, to elevate him and to do unto him all the good which thou shalt command us. 
and at that time the king sent to Abram silver and gold and precious stones in abundance, together with cattle, men servants, and maid servants. And the king ordered Abram to be brought, and he sat in the court of the king's house, and the king greatly exalted Abram on that night. And the king approached to speak to Sarai, and he reached out his hand to touch her, when the angel smote him heavily, and he was terrified, and he refrained from reaching to her. And when the king came near to Sarai, the angel smote him to the ground, and acted thus to him the whole night, and the king was terrified. And the angel on that night smote heavily all the servants of the king, and his whole household on account of Sarai, and there was a great lamentation that night amongst the people of Pharaoh's house. And Pharaoh, seeing the evil that befell him, said, Surely on account of this woman has this thing happened to me. And he removed himself at some distance from her and spoke pleasing words to her. And the king said to Sarai, Tell me, I pray thee, concerning the man with whom thou camest here. And Sarai said, This man is my husband. And I said to thee that he was my brother, for I was afraid lest thou shouldst put him to death through wickedness. And the king kept away from Sarai. And the plagues of the angel of the Lord ceased from him and his household. And Pharaoh knew that he was smitten on account of Sarai, and the king was greatly astonished at this. And in the morning the king called for Abram and said to him, What is this that thou hast done to me? Why didst thou say she is my sister, owing to which I took her unto me for a wife, and this heavy plague has therefore come upon me in my household? Now therefore here is thy wife, take her, and go from our land, lest we all die on her account. And Pharaoh took more cattle, men-servants, and maid-servants, and silver and gold, to give to Abram, and he returned unto him Sarai his wife. And the king took a maiden whom he begat by his concubines, and he gave her to Sarai for a handmaid. And the king said to his daughter, It is better for thee, my daughter, to be a handmaid in this man's house, than to be a mistress in my house, after we have beheld the evil that befell us on account of this woman. And Abram arose, and he and all belonging to him went away from Egypt. And Pharaoh ordered some of his men to accompany him, and all that went with him. And Abram returned to the land of Canaan, to the place where he had made the altar, where he at first had pitched his tent. And Lot, the son of Haran, Abram's brother, had a heavy stock of cattle, flocks, and herds, and tents. For the Lord was bountiful to them on account of Abram. And when Abram was dwelling in the land, the herdsmen of Lot quarreled with the herdsmen of Abram, for their property was too great for them to remain together in the land, and the land could not bear them on account of their cattle. And when Abram's herdsmen went to feed their flock, they would not go into the fields of the people of the land, but the cattle of Lot's herdsmen did otherwise, for they were suffered to feed in the fields of the people of the land. And the people of the land saw this occurrence daily, and they came to Abram and quarreled with him on account of Lot's herdsmen. And Abram said to Lot, what is this thou art doing to me, to make me despicable to the inhabitants of the land, that thou orderest thy herdsmen to feed thy cattle in the fields of other people? Dost thou not know that I am a stranger in this land amongst the children of Canaan? And why wilt thou do this unto me? And Abram quarreled daily with Lot on account of this, but Lot would not listen to Abram, and he continued to do the same. And the inhabitants of the land came and told Abram. And Abram said unto Lot, how long wilt thou be to me for a stumbling block with the inhabitants of the land? Now I beseech thee, let there be no more quarreling between us, for we are kinsmen. But I pray thee separate from me, go and choose a place where thou mayest dwell with thy cattle and all belonging to thee, but keep thyself at a distance from me, thou and thy household. And be not afraid in going from me, for if any one do an injury to thee, let me know, and I will avenge thy cause from him only remove from me. And when Abram had spoken all these words to Lot, then Lot arose and lifted up his eyes toward the plain of Jordan. And he saw that the whole of this place was well watered and good for man as well as affording pasture for cattle. And Lot went from Abram to that place, and he there pitched his tent and dwelt in Sodom, and they were separated from each other. And Abram dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and he pitched his tent there, and Abram remained in that place many years. End of chapter 15
of the Book of Jasher. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 16 At that time, Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, sent to all the neighboring kings, to Nimrod, king of Shinar, who was then under his power, and to Tidal, king of Goyim, and to Arioch, king of Elasar, with whom he had made a covenant, saying, Come up to me and assist me, that we may smite all the towns of Sodom and its inhabitants, for they have rebelled against me these thirteen years. And these four kings went up with all their camps, about eight hundred thousand men, and they went as they were, and smote every man they found in their road. And the five kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adama, Shemabar, king of Zeboim, Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, and Bela, king of Zoar, went out to meet them, and they all joined together in the valley of Siddim. And these nine kings made war in the valley of Siddim, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah were smitten before the kings of Elam. And the valley of Siddim was full of lime pits, and the kings of Elam pursued the kings of Sodom. And the kings of Sodom with their camps fled and fell into the lime pits, and all that remained went to the mountain for safety. And the five kings of Elam came after them and pursued them to the gates of Sodom, and they took all that there was in Sodom. And they plundered all the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they also took Lot, Abram's brother's son, and his property. And they seized all the goods of the cities of Sodom, and they went away. And Eunuch, Abram's servant, who was in the battle, saw this and told Abram all that the kings had done to the cities of Sodom, and that Lot was taken captive by them. And Abram heard this, and he rose up with about three hundred and eighteen men that were with him, and he that night pursued these kings and smote them, and they all fell before Abram and his men, and there was none remaining but the four kings who fled, and they went each his own road. And Abram recovered all the property of Sodom, and he also recovered Lot and his property, his wives and little ones, and all belonging to him, so that Lot lacked nothing. And when he returned from smiting these kings, he and his men passed the valley of Siddim, where the kings had made war together. And Bera, king of Sodom, and the rest of his men that were with him, went out from the lime pits into which they had fallen to meet Abram and his men. And Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, the same was Shem, went out with his men to meet Abram and his people, with bread and wine, and they remained together in the valley of Melech. And Adonizanek blessed Abram, and Abram gave him a tenth from all that he had brought from the spoil of his enemy, for Adonizanek was a priest before God. And all the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah who were there with their servants approached Abram and begged of him to return them their servants, whom he had made captive, and to take unto himself all the property. And Abram answered the kings of Sodom, saying, As the Lord liveth who created heaven and earth, and who redeemed my soul from all affliction, and who delivered me this day from my enemies, and gave them into my hand, I will not take anything belonging to you, that you may not boast to-morrow, saying, Abram became rich from our property that he saved. For the Lord my God, in whom I trust, said unto me, Thou shalt lack nothing, for I will bless thee in all the works of thy hands. And now therefore, behold, here is all belonging to you, take it and go. As the Lord liveth, I will not take from you from a living soul down to a shoe-tie or thread, excepting the expense of the food of those who went out with me to battle, as also the portions of the men who went with me, Anar, Ashkol, and Mamre, they and their men, as well as those also who had remained to watch the baggage, they shall take their portion of the spoil. And the kings of Sodom gave Abram according to all that he had said, and they pressed him to take of whatever he chose, but he would not. And he sent away the kings of Sodom, and the remainder of their men, and he gave them orders about Lot, and they went to their respective places. And Lot, his brother's son, he also sent away with his property, and he went with them. And Lot returned to his home, to Sodom, and Abram and his people returned to their home, to the plains of Mamre, which is in Hebron. At that time the Lord again appeared to Abram in Hebron, and he said to him, Do not fear, thy reward is very great before me, for I will not leave thee, until I shall have multiplied thee, and blessed thee, and made thy seed like the stars in heaven, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And I will give unto thy seed all these lands that thou seest with thine eyes. To them will I give them for an inheritance for ever. 
only be strong and do not fear walk before me and be perfect and in the seventy-eighth year of the life of abram in that year died ro son of peleg and all the days of ro were two hundred and thirty-nine years and he died and sarai the daughter of haran abram's wife was still barren in those days she did not bear to abram either son or daughter and when she saw that she bare no children she took her handmaid hagar whom pharaoh had given her and she gave her to abram her husband for a wife for hagar learned all the ways of sarai as sarai taught her she was not in any way deficient in following her good ways and sarai said to abram behold here is my handmaid hagar go to her that she may bring forth upon my knees that i may also obtain children through her and at the end of ten years of abram's dwelling in the land of canaan which is the eighty-fifth year of abram's life sarai gave hagar unto him and abram hearkened to the voice of his wife sarai and he took his handmaid hagar and abram came to her and she conceived and when hagar saw that she had conceived she rejoiced greatly and her mistress was despised in her eyes and she said within herself this can only be that i am better before god than sarai my mistress for all the days that my mistress has been with my lord she did not conceive but me the lord has caused in so short a time to conceive by him and when sarai saw that hagar had conceived by abram sarai was jealous of her handmaid and sarai said within herself this is surely nothing else but that she must be better than i am and sarai said unto abram my wrong be upon thee for at the time when thou didst pray before the lord for children why didst thou not pray on my account that the lord should give me seed from thee and when i speak to hagar in thy presence she despiseth my words because she is conceived and thou wilt say nothing to her may the lord judge between me and thee for what thou hast done to me and abram said to sarai behold thy handmaid is in thy hands do unto her as it may seem good in thy eyes and sarai afflicted her and hagar fled from her to the wilderness and an angel of the lord found her in the place where she had fled by a well and he said to her do not fear for i will multiply thy seed for thou shalt bear a son and thou shalt call his name ishmael now then return to sarai thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands and hagar called the place of that well bir lahairoi it is between kadesh and the wilderness of bered and hagar at that time returned to her master's house and at the end of days hagar bare a son to abram and abram called his name ishmael and abram was eighty-six years old when he begat him end of chapter sixteen chapter seventeen of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter seventeen and in those days in the ninety-first year of the life of abram the children of chittim made war with the children of tubal for when the lord had scattered the sons of men upon the face of the earth the children of chittim went and embodied themselves in the plain of canopia and they built themselves cities there and dwelt by the river tabru and the children of tubal dwelt in toscana and their boundaries reached the river tabru and the children of tubal built a city in toscana and they called the name sabina after the name of sabina son of tubal their father and they dwelt there unto this day and it was at that time the children of chittim made war with the children of tubal and the children of tubal were smitten before the children of chittim and the children of chittim caused three hundred and seventy men to fall from the children of tubal and at that time the children of tubal swore to the children of chittim saying you shall not intermarry amongst us and no man shall give his daughter to any of the sons of chittim for all the daughters of tubal were in those days fair for no women were then found in the whole earth so fair as the daughters of tubal and all who delighted in the beauty of women went to the daughters of tubal and took wives from them and the sons of men kings and princes who greatly delighted in the beauty of women took wives in those days from the daughters of tubal and at the end of three years after the children of tubal had sworn to the children of chittim not to give them their daughters for wives about twenty men of the children of chittim went to take some of the daughters of tubal but they found none for the children of tubal kept their oaths not to intermarry with them and they would not break their oaths and in the days of the harvest the children of tubal went into their fields to get in their harvest 
when the young men of Chittim assembled and went to the city of Sabina, and each man took a young woman from the daughters of Tubal, and they came to their cities. And the children of Tubal heard of it, and they went to make war with them, and they could not prevail over them, for the mountain was exceedingly high from them, and when they saw they could not prevail over them, they returned to their land. And at the revolution of the year, the children of Tubal went and hired about ten thousand men from those cities that were near them, and they went to war with the children of Chittim. And the children of Tubal went to war with the children of Chittim, to destroy their land and to distress them. And in this engagement the children of Tubal prevailed over the children of Chittim, and the children of Chittim, seeing that they were greatly distressed, lifted up the children which they had had by the daughters of Tubal upon the wall which had been built, to be before the eyes of the children of Tubal. And the children of Chittim said to them, Have you come to make war with your own sons and daughters? And have we not been considered your flesh and bones from that time till now? And when the children of Tubal heard this, they ceased to make war with the children of Chittim, and they went away. And they returned to their cities. And the children of Chittim at that time assembled and built two cities by the sea, and they called one Pertu and the other Ariza. And Abram the son of Terah was ninety-nine years old. At that time the Lord appeared to him, and he said to him, I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will greatly multiply thy seed. And this is the covenant which I make between me and thee, that every male child be circumcised, thou and thy seed after thee. At eight days old shall it be circumcised, and this covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And now therefore thy name shall no more be called Abram, but Abraham, and thy wife shall no more be called Sarai, but Sarah. For I will bless you both, and I will multiply your seed after you, that you shall become a great nation, and kings shall come forth from you. End of chapter 17「Chapter Eighteen of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Eighteen. And Abram rose and did all that God had ordered him, and he took the men of his household and those bought with his money, and he circumcised them as the Lord had commanded him, and there was not one left whom he did not circumcise. And Abram and his son Ishmael were circumcised in the flesh of their foreskin. Thirteen years old was Ishmael when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And in the third day Abraham went out of his tent and sat at the door to enjoy the heat of the sun during the pain of his flesh. And the Lord appeared to him in the plain of Mamre, and sent three of his ministering angels to visit him, and he was sitting at the door of the tent. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and lo, three men were coming from a distance, and he rose up and ran to meet them. And he bowed down to them and brought them into his house. And he said to them, If now I have found favor in your sight, turn in and eat a morsel of bread. And he pressed them, and they turned in, and he gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he placed them under a tree at the door of the tent. And Abraham ran and took a calf, tender and good, and he hastened to kill it, and gave it to his servant Eliezer to dress. And Abraham came to Sarah into the tent, and he said to her, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes to cover the pot containing the meat. And she did so. And Abraham hastened and brought before them butter and milk, beef and mutton, and gave it before them to eat before the flesh of the calf was sufficiently done, and they did eat. And when they had done eating, one of them said to him, I will return to thee according to the time of life, and Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And the men afterward departed and went their ways to the places to which they were sent. In those days all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and of the whole five cities were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord, and they provoked the Lord with their abominations, and they strengthened in acting abominably and scornfully before the Lord, and their wickedness and crimes were in those days great before the Lord. And they had in their land a very extensive valley, about half a day's walk, and in it there were fountains of water and a great deal of herbage surrounding the water. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah went there four times in the year, with their wives and children, and all belonging to them, and they rejoiced there with timbrels and dances. And in the time of rejoicing they would all rise and lay hold of their neighbors' wives, and some the virgin daughters of their neighbors, and they enjoyed them. 
and each man saw his wife and daughter in the hands of his neighbor and did not say a word. And they did so from morning to night, and they afterward returned home, each man to his house, and each woman to her tent. So they always did four times in the year. Also when a stranger came into their cities and brought goods which he had purchased with a view to dispose of there, the people of these cities would assemble, men, women, and children, young and old, and go to the man and take his goods by force, giving a little to each man until there was an end to all the goods of the owner which he had brought into the land. And if the owner of the goods quarreled with them, saying, What is this work which you have done to me? Then they would approach to him one by one, and each would show him the little which he took, and taunt him, saying, I only took that little which thou didst give me. And when he heard this from them all, he would arise and go from them in sorrow and bitterness of soul, when they would all arise and go after him, and drive him out of the city with great noise and tumult. And there was a man from the country of Elam, who was leisurely going on the road, seated upon his ass, which carried a fine mantle of diverse colors, and the mantle was bound with a cord upon the ass. And the man was on his journey, passing through the street of Sodom, when the sun set in the evening, and he remained there in order to abide during the night but no one would let him into his house. And at that time there was in Sodom a wicked and mischievous man, one skillful to do evil, and his name was Hadad. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the traveler in the street of the city. And he came to him and said, Whence comest thou, and whither dost thou go? And the man said to him, I am traveling from Hebron to Elam, where I belong. And as I passed the sun set, and no one would suffer me to enter his house, though I had bread and water, and also straw and provender for my ass, and am short of nothing. And Hadad answered and said to him, All that thou shalt want shall be supplied by me, but in the street thou shalt not abide all night. And Hadad brought him to his house, and he took off the mantle from the ass with the cord, and brought them to his house, and he gave the ass straw and provender whilst the traveller ate and drank in Hadad's house, and he abided there that night. And in the morning the traveller rose up early to continue his journey, when Hadad said to him, Wait, comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread, and then go. And the man did so, and he remained with him, and they both ate and drank together during the day, when the man rose up to go. And Hadad said to him, Behold, now the day is declining. Thou hadst better remain all night, that thy heart may be comforted. And he pressed him, so that he tarried there all night and on the second day he rose up early to go away, when Hadad pressed him, saying, Comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread, and then go. And he remained and ate with him also the second day, and then the man rose up to continue his journey. And Hadad said to him, Behold, now the day is declining. Remain with me to comfort thy heart, and in the morning rise up early and go thy way. And the man would not remain, but rose and saddled his ass. And whilst he was saddling his ass, the wife of Hadad said to her husband, Behold, this man has remained with us for two days, eating and drinking, and he has given us nothing. And now shall he go away from us without giving anything? And Hadad said to her, Be silent. And the man saddled his ass to go. And he asked Hadad to give him the cord and mantle, to tie it upon the ass. And Hadad said to him, What sayest thou? And he said to him, that thou, my lord, shalt give me the cord and the mantle made with diverse colors, which thou didst conceal with thee in thy house to take care of it. And Hadad answered the man, saying, This is the interpretation of thy dream. The cord which thou didst see means that thy life will be lengthened out like a cord. And having seen the mantle colored with all sorts of colors, means that thou shalt have a vineyard in which thou wilt plant trees of all fruits. And the traveller answered, saying, Not so, my lord, for I was awake when I gave thee the cord, and also a mantle woven with different colours, which thou didst take off the ass, and put them by for me. And Hadad answered and said, Surely I have told thee the interpretation of thy dream, and it is a good dream, and this is the interpretation thereof. Now the sons of men give me four pieces of silver, which is my charge for interpreting dreams, and of thee I only require three pieces of silver. And the man was provoked at the words of Hadad, and he cried bitterly, and he brought Hadad to Sarak, judge of Sodom. 
and the man laid his cause before Sirach the judge, when Hadad replied, saying, It is not so, but thus the matter stands. And the judge said to the traveller, This man Hadad telleth thee truth, for he is famed in the cities for the accurate interpretation of dreams. And the man cried at the word of the judge, and he said, Not so, my lord, for it was in the day that I gave him the cord and mantle which was upon the ass, in order to put them by in his house. And they both disputed before the judge, the one saying thus the matter was, and the other declaring otherwise. And Hidad said to the man, Give me four pieces of silver that I charge for my interpretations of dreams. I will not make any allowance, and give me the expense of the four meals that thou didst eat in my house. And the man said to Hadad, Truly I will pay thee for what I ate in thy house, only give me the cord and mantle which thou didst conceal in thy house. And Hadad replied before the judge and said to the man, Did I not tell thee the interpretation of thy dream? The cord means that thy days shall be prolonged like a cord, and the mantle that thou wilt have a vineyard which thou wilt plant all kinds of fruit trees. This is the proper interpretation of thy dream. Now give me the four pieces of silver that I require as a compensation, for I will make thee no allowance. And the man cried at the words of Hadad, and they both quarreled before the judge, and the judge gave orders to his servants who drove them rashly from the house. And they went away quarreling from the judge. When the people of Sodom heard them, and they gathered about them, and they exclaimed against the stranger, and they drove him rashly from the city. And the man continued his journey upon his ass with bitterness of soul, lamenting and weeping. And whilst he was going along, he wept at what had happened to him in the corrupt city of Sodom. End of chapter 18「Chapter nineteen of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter nineteen. And the cities of Sodom had four judges to four cities, and these were their names: Sirak in the city of Sodom, Sharkad in Gomorrah, Zabnak in Adma, and Menon in Zeboim. And Eleazar Abram's servant applied to them different names, and he converted Sirak to Shakra. Sharkad to Shakrura, Zabnak to Kazobim, and Minan to Metzloden. And by desire of their four judges, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah had beds erected in the streets of the cities. And if a man came to these places, they laid hold of him and brought him to one of their beds, and by force made him to lie in them. And as he lay down, three men would stand at his head and three at his feet, and measure him by the length of the bed. And if the man was less than the bed, these six men would stretch him at each end, and when he cried out to them, they would not answer him. And if he was longer than the bed, then they would draw together the two sides of the bed at each end, until the man had reached the gates of death. And if he continued to cry out to them, they would answer him, saying, Thus shall it be done to a man that cometh into our land. And when men heard all these things that the people of the cities of Sodom did, they refrained from coming there. And when a poor man came to their land, they would give him silver and gold, and cause a proclamation in the whole city not to give him a morsel of bread to eat. And if the stranger should remain there some days and die from hunger, not having been able to obtain a morsel of bread, then at his death all the people of the city would come and take their silver and gold which they had given to him. And those that could recognize the silver or gold which they had given him took it back, and at his death they also stripped him of his garments, and they would fight about them, and he that prevailed over his neighbor took them, and they would after that carry him and bury him under some of the shrubs in the deserts, so they did all the days to any one that came to them and died in their land. And in the course of time Sarah sent Eleazar to Sodom to see Lot and inquire after his welfare, and Eleazar went to Sodom and he met a man of Sodom fighting with a stranger, and the man of Sodom stripped the poor man of all his clothes and went away. And this poor man cried to Eleazar and supplicated his favor on account of what the man of Sodom had done to him. And he said to him, Why dost thou act thus to the poor man who came to thy land? And the man of Sodom answered Eleazar, saying, Is this man thy brother, 
or have the people of Sodom made thee a judge this day that thou speakest about this man? And Eliezer strove with the man of Sodom on account of the poor man, and when Eliezer approached to recover the poor man's clothes from the man of Sodom, he hastened and with a stone smote Eliezer in the forehead. And the blood flowed copiously from Eliezer's forehead, and when the man saw the blood he caught hold of Eliezer, saying, Give me my hire for having rid thee of this bad blood that was in thy forehead, for such is the custom and the law in our land. And Eliezer said to him, Thou hast wounded me, and requirest me to pay thee thy hire? And Eliezer would not hearken to the words of the man of Sodom. And the man laid hold of Eliezer, and brought him to Shachra the judge of Sodom for judgment. And the man spoke to the judge, saying, I beseech thee, my lord, thus has this man done, for I smote him with a stone that the blood flowed from his forehead, and he is unwilling to give me my hire. And the judge said to Eliezer, This man speaketh truth to thee, give him his hire, for this is the custom in our land. And Eliezer heard the words of the judge, and he lifted up a stone and smote the judge. And the stone struck on his forehead, and the blood flowed copiously from the forehead of the judge. And Eliezer said, If this then is the custom in your land, give thou unto this man what I should have given him, for this has been thy decision, thou didst decree it. And Eliezer left the man of Sodom with the judge, and he went away. And when the kings of Elam had made war with the kings of Sodom, the kings of Elam captured all the property of Sodom, and they took Lot captive with his property. And when it was told to Abraham, he went and made war with the kings of Elam, and he recovered from their hands all the property of Lot as well as the property of Sodom. At that time the wife of Lot bare him a daughter, and he called her name Paltith, saying, Because God had delivered him and his whole household from the kings of Elam, and Paltith, daughter of Lot, grew up, and one of the men of Sodom took her for a wife. And a poor man came into the city to seek a maintenance, and he remained in the city some days. And all the people of Sodom caused a proclamation of their custom not to give this man a morsel of bread to eat, until he dropped dead upon the earth, and they did so. And Paltith the daughter of Lot saw this man lying in the street starved with hunger, and no one would give him anything to keep him alive, and he was just upon the point of death and her soul was filled with pity on account of the man, and she fed him secretly with bread for many days. And the soul of this man was revived. For when she went forth to fetch water, she would put the bread in the water pitcher. And when she came to the place where the poor man was, she took the bread from the pitcher and gave it him to eat. So she did many days. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wondered how this man could bear starvation for so many days. And they said to each other, This can only be that he eats and drinks, for no man can bear starvation for so many days or live as this man has, without even his countenance changing. And three men concealed themselves in a place where the poor man was stationed, to know who it was that brought him bread to eat. And Paltith, daughter of Lot, went forth that day to fetch water. And she put bread into her pitcher of water, and she went to draw water by the poor man's place. And she took out the bread from the pitcher, and gave it to the poor man, and he ate it. And the three men saw what Paltith did to the poor man, and they said to her, It is thou, then, who hast supported him, and therefore has he not starved, nor changed in appearance, nor died like the rest. And the three men went out of the place in which they were concealed, and they seized Paltith and the bread which was in the poor man's hand. And they took Paltith and brought her before their judges, and they said to them, Thus did she do, and it is she who supplied the poor man with bread. Therefore did he not die all this time. Now therefore declare to us the punishment due to this woman for having transgressed our law. And the people of Sodom and Gomorrah assembled and kindled a fire in the street of the city, and they took the woman and cast her into the fire, and she was burned to ashes. And in the city of Adma there was a woman to whom they did the like. For a traveller came into the city of Adma to abide there all night, with the intention of going home in the morning, and he sat opposite the door of the house of the young woman's father, to remain there, as the sun had set when he had reached that place. And the young woman saw him sitting by the door of the house, and he asked her for a drink of water, 
And she said to him, Who art thou? And he said to her, I was this day going on the road and reached here when the sun set, so I will abide here all night, and in the morning I will arise early and continue my journey. And the young woman went into the house and fetched the man bread and water to eat and drink. And this affair became known to the people of Adma, and they assembled and brought the young woman before the judges that they should judge her for this act. And the judge said the judgment of death must pass upon this woman because she transgressed our law, and this, therefore, is the decision concerning her. And the people of those cities assembled and brought out the young woman and anointed her with honey from head to foot, as the judge had decreed, and they placed her before a swarm of bees which were then in their hives, and the bees flew upon her and stung her that her whole body was swelled. And the young woman cried out on account of the bees, but no one took notice of her or pitied her, and her cries ascended to heaven. And the Lord was provoked at this and at all the works of the cities of Sodom, for they had abundance of food and had tranquility amongst them, and still would not sustain the poor and the needy. And in those days their evil doings and sins became great before the Lord. And the Lord sent for two of the angels that had come to Abraham's house to destroy Sodom and its cities. And the angels rose up from the door of Abraham's tent after they had eaten and drunk, and they reached Sodom in the evening. And Lot was then sitting in the gate of Sodom. And when he saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed down to the ground. And he pressed them greatly and brought them into his house, and he gave them victuals which they ate, and they abided all night in his house. And the angel said to Lot, Arise, go forth from this place, thou and all belonging to thee, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this city, for the Lord will destroy this place. And the angels laid hold upon the hand of Lot and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hands of his children and all belonging to him, and they brought him forth and set him without the cities. And they said to Lot, Escape for thy life, and he fled and all belonging to him. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, and upon all these cities brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew these cities, and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. And Adu, the wife of Lot, looked back to see the destruction of the cities, for her compassion was moved on account of her daughters who remained in Sodom, for they did not go with her. And when she looked back she became a pillar of salt, and it is yet in that place unto this day. And the oxen which stood in that place daily licked up the salt to the extremities of their feet, and in the morning it would spring forth afresh, and they again licked it up unto this day. And Lot and two of his daughters that remained with him fled and escaped to the cave of Adullam, and they remained there for some time. And Abraham rose up early in the morning to see what had been done to the cities of Sodom. And he looked and beheld the smoke of the cities going up like the smoke of a furnace. And Lot and his two daughters remained in the cave, and they made their father drink wine, and they lay with him, for they said there was no man upon the earth that could raise up seed from them, for they thought that the whole earth was destroyed. And they both lay with their father, and they conceived and bare sons. And the firstborn called the name of her son Moab, saying, From my father did I conceive him. He is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger also called her son Benami. He is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. And after this Lot and his two daughters went away from there, and he dwelt on the other side of the Jordan with his two daughters and their sons. And the sons of Lot grew up, and they went and took themselves wives from the land of Canaan, and they begat children, and they were fruitful and multiplied. End of chapter 19。Chapter 20 And at that time Abraham journeyed from the plain of Mamre, and he went to the land of the Philistines, and he dwelt in Gerar. It was in the twenty-fifth year of Abraham's being in the land of Canaan, and the hundredth year of the life of Abraham, that he came to Gerar in the land of the Philistines. And when they entered the land, he said to Sarah his wife, Say thou art my sister to any one that shall ask thee. 
in order that we may escape the evil of the inhabitants of the land. And as Abraham was dwelling in the land of the Philistines, the servants of Abimelech, king of the Philistines, saw that Sarah was exceedingly beautiful, and they asked Abraham concerning her, and he said, She is my sister. And the servants of Abimelech went to Abimelech, saying, A man from the land of Canaan is come to dwell in the land, and he has a sister that is exceeding fair. And Abimelech heard the words of his servants who praised Sarah to him, and Abimelech sent his officers, and they brought Sarah to the king. And Sarah came to the house of Abimelech, and the king saw that Sarah was beautiful, and she pleased him exceedingly. And he approached her and said to her, What is that man to thee, with whom thou didst come to our land? And Sarah answered and said, He is my brother, and we came from the land of Canaan to dwell wherever we could find a place. And Abimelech said to Sarah, Behold, my land is before thee. Place thy brother in any part of this land that pleases thee, and it will be our duty to exalt and elevate him above all the people of the land, since he is thy brother. And Abimelech sent for Abraham, and Abraham came to Abimelech. And Abimelech said to Abraham, Behold, I have given orders that thou shalt be honored as thou desirest, on account of thy sister Sarah. And Abraham went forth from the king, and the king's present followed him. As at evening time before men lie down to rest, the king was sitting upon his throne, and a deep sleep fell upon him, and he lay upon the throne and slept till morning. And he dreamed that an angel of the Lord came to him with a drawn sword in his hand, and the angel stood over Abimelech, and wished to slay him with the sword. And the king was terrified in his dream, and said to the angel, in what have I sinned against thee that thou comest to slay me with thy sword? And the angel answered and said to Abimelech, Behold, thou diest on account of the woman which thou didst yesternight bring to thy house. For she is a married woman, the wife of Abraham who came to thy house. Now therefore return that man his wife, for she is his wife. And shouldst thou not return her, know that thou wilt surely die thou and all belonging to thee. And on that night there was a great outcry in the land of the Philistines, and the inhabitants of the land saw the figure of a man standing with a drawn sword in his hand, and he smote the inhabitants of the land with the sword, yea, he continued to smite them. And the angel of the Lord smote the whole land of the Philistines on that night, and there was a great confusion on that night and on the following morning. And every womb was closed, and all their issues, and the hand of the Lord was upon them on account of Sarah, wife of Abraham, whom Abimelech had taken. And in the morning Abimelech rose with terror and confusion, and with a great dread, and he sent, and had his servants called in, and he related his dream to them, and the people were greatly afraid. And one man standing amongst the servants of the king answered the king, saying, O sovereign king, restore this woman to her husband, for he is her husband, for the like happened to the king of Egypt when this man came to Egypt. And he said concerning his wife, She is my sister, for such is his manner of doing when he cometh to dwell in the land in which he is a stranger. And Pharaoh sent and took this woman for a wife, and the Lord brought upon him grievous plagues until he returned the woman to her husband. Now therefore, O sovereign king, Know what happened yesternight to the whole land, for there was a very great consternation, and great pain and lamentation, and we know that this was on account of the woman which thou didst take. Now therefore restore this woman to her husband, lest it should befall us as it did to Pharaoh king of Egypt and his subjects, and that we may not die. And Abimelech hastened and called and had Sarah called for, and she came before him. And he had Abraham called for, and he came before him. And Abimelech said to them, What is this work you've been doing in saying you are brother and sister? And I took this woman for a wife. And Abraham said, Because I thought I should suffer death on account of my wife. And Abimelech took flocks and herds, and men servants and maid servants, and a thousand pieces of silver, and he gave them to Abraham, and he returned Sarah to him. And Abimelech said to Abraham, Behold, the whole land is before thee. Dwell in it wherever thou shalt choose. 
And Abraham and Sarah his wife went forth from the king's presence with honor and respect, and they dwelt in the land, even in Gerar. And all the inhabitants of the land of the Philistines and the king's servants were still in pain, through the plague which the angel had inflicted upon them the whole night on account of Sarah. And Abimelech sent for Abraham, saying, Pray now for thy servants to the Lord thy God, that he may put away this mortality from amongst us. And Abraham prayed on account of Abimelech and his subjects. And the Lord heard the prayer of Abraham, and he healed Abimelech and all his subjects. End of chapter 20「Chapter twenty one of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter twenty one. And it was at that time, at the end of a year and four months of Abraham's dwelling in the land of the Philistines in Gerar, that God visited Sarah, and the Lord remembered her, and she conceived and bare a son to Abraham. And Abraham called the name of the son which was born to him, which Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac at eight days old, as God had commanded Abraham to do unto his seed after him. And Abraham was one hundred, and Sarah ninety years old when Isaac was born to them. And the child grew up, and he was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast upon the day that Isaac was weaned. And Shem and Eber, and all the great people of the land, and Abimelech, king of the Philistines, and his servants, and Phicol, the captain of his host, came to eat and drink and rejoice at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of his son Isaac's being weaned. Also Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor his brother came from Haran, they and all belonging to them, for they greatly rejoiced on hearing that a son had been born to Sarah. And they came to Abraham, and they ate and drank at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of Isaac's being weaned. And Terah and Nahor rejoiced with Abraham, and they remained with him many days in the land of the Philistines. At that time Sarug the son of Ru died, in the first year of the birth of Isaac son of Abraham. And all the days of Sarug were two hundred and thirty-nine years, and he died. And Ishmael the son of Abraham was grown up in those days. He was fourteen years old when Sarah bare Isaac to Abraham. And God was with Ishmael the son of Abraham, and he grew up, and he learned the use of the bow, and became an archer. And when Isaac was five years old, he was sitting with Ishmael at the door of the tent. And Ishmael came to Isaac, and seated himself opposite to him. And he took the bow, and drew it, and put the arrow in it, and intended to slay Isaac. And Sarah saw the act which Ishmael desired to do to her son Isaac, and it grieved her exceedingly on account of her son. And she sent for Abraham, and said to him, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for her son shall not be heir with my son, for thus did he seek to do unto him this day. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah, and he rose up early in the morning, and he took twelve loaves and a bottle of water which he gave to Hagar, and sent her away with her son. And Hagar went with her son to the wilderness. And they dwelt in the wilderness of Paran with the inhabitants of the wilderness. And Ishmael was an archer, and he dwelt in the wilderness a long time. And he and his mother afterward went to the land of Egypt, and they dwelt there. And Hagar took a wife for her son from Egypt, and her name was Meribah. And the wife of Ishmael conceived and bare four sons and two daughters. And Ishmael and his mother and his wife and children afterward went and returned to the wilderness. And they made themselves tents in the wilderness in which they dwelt, and they continued to travel and then to rest monthly and yearly. And God gave Ishmael flocks and herds and tents on account of Abraham his father, and the man increased in cattle. And Ishmael dwelt in deserts and in tents, traveling and resting for a long time, and he did not see the face of his father. And in some time after, Abraham said to Sarah his wife, I will go and see my son Ishmael, for I have a desire to see him, for I have not seen him for a long time. And Abraham rode upon one of his camels to the wilderness to seek his son Ishmael, for he heard that he was dwelling in a tent in the wilderness with all belonging to him. And Abraham went to the wilderness, and he reached the tent of Ishmael about noon, and he asked after Ishmael. 
and he found the wife of Ishmael sitting in the tent with her children, and Ishmael her husband and his mother were not with them. And Abraham asked the wife of Ishmael, saying, Where has Ishmael gone? And she said, He has gone to the field to hunt. And Abraham was still mounted upon the camel, for he would not get off to the ground, as he had sworn to his wife Sarah that he would not get off from the camel. And Abraham said to Ishmael's wife, My daughter, give me a little water that I may drink, for I am fatigued from the journey. And Ishmael's wife answered and said to Abraham, We have neither water nor bread. And she continued sitting in the tent and did not notice Abraham, neither did she ask him who he was. But she was beating her children in the tent, and she was cursing them. And she also cursed her husband Ishmael and reproached him. And Abraham heard the words of Ishmael's wife to her children, and he was very angry and displeased. And Abraham called to the woman to come out to him from the tent, and the woman came and stood opposite to Abraham, for Abraham was still mounted upon the camel. And Abraham said to Ishmael's wife, When thy husband Ishmael returneth home, say these words to him. A very old man from the land of the Philistines came hither to seek thee. And thus was his appearance and figure. I did not ask him who he was, and seeing thou wast not here, he spoke unto me and said, When Ishmael thy husband returneth, tell him thus did the man say, When thou comest home, put away this nail of the tent which thou hast placed here, and place another nail in its stead. And Abraham finished his instructions to the woman, and he returned and went off on the camel homeward. And after that Ishmael came from the chase, he and his mother, and returned to the tent, and his wife spoke these words to him. A very old man from the land of the Philistines came to seek thee, and thus was his appearance and figure. I did not ask him who he was, and seeing thou wast not at home, he said to me, When thy husband cometh home, tell him, Thus saith the old man, Put away the nail of the tent which thou hast placed here, and place another nail in its stead. And Ishmael heard the words of his wife, and he knew that it was his father, and that his wife did not honor him. And Ishmael understood his father's words that he had spoken to his wife, and Ishmael hearkened to the voice of his father, and Ishmael cast off that woman, and she went away. And Ishmael afterward went to the land of Canaan, and he took another wife, and he brought her to his tent to the place where he then dwelt. And at the end of three years Abraham said, I will go again and see Ishmael my son, for I have not seen him for a long time. And he rode upon his camel and went to the wilderness, and he reached the tent of Ishmael about noon. And he asked after Ishmael, and his wife came out of the tent, and she said, He is not here, my lord, for he has gone to hunt in the fields, and to feed the camels. And the woman said to Abraham, Turn in, my lord, into the tent, and eat a morsel of bread, for thy soul must be wearied on account of the journey. And Abraham said to her, I will not stop, for I am in haste to continue my journey, but give me a little water to drink, for I have thirst. And the woman hastened, and ran into the tent, and she brought out water and bread to Abraham, which she placed before him, and she urged him to eat. And he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted, and he blessed his son Ishmael. And he finished his meal, and he blessed the Lord, and he said to Ishmael's wife, when Ishmael cometh home, say these words to him. A very old man from the land of the Philistines came hither and asked after thee, and thou wast not here. And I brought him out bread and water, and he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted. And he spoke these words to me. When Ishmael thy husband cometh home, say unto him, The nail of the tent which thou hast is very good. Do not put it away from the tent. And Abraham finished commanding the woman, and he rode off to his home to the land of the Philistines. And when Ishmael came to his tent, his wife went forth to meet him with joy and a cheerful heart. And she said to him, An old man came here from the land of the Philistines, and thus was his appearance. And he asked after thee, and thou wast not here, so I brought out bread and water, and he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted. And he spoke these words to me. When Ishmael thy husband cometh home, say to him, The nail of the tent which thou hast is very good. Do not put it away from the tent. And Ishmael knew that it was his father, and that his wife had honored him. And the Lord blessed Ishmael.
End of chapter 21 Read by C.J. Plogue Chapter 22 of the Book of Jasher This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 22 And Ishmael then rose up and took his wife and his children and his cattle and all belonging to him. And he journeyed from there, and he went to his father in the land of the Philistines. And Abraham related to Ishmael his son the transaction with the first wife that Ishmael took, according to what she did. And Ishmael and his children dwelt with Abraham many days in that land. And Abraham dwelt in the land of the Philistines a long time. And the days increased and reached twenty-six years, and after that Abraham with his servants and all belonging to him went from the land of the Philistines and removed to a great distance. And they came near to Hebron, and they remained there, and the servants of Abraham dug wells of water. And Abraham and all belonging to him dwelt by the water. And the servants of Abimelech, king of the Philistines, heard the report that Abraham's servants had dug wells of water in the borders of the land. And they came and quarreled with the servants of Abraham, and they robbed him of the great well which they had dug. And Abimelech, king of the Philistines, heard of this affair, and he, with Phicol, the captain of his host, and twenty of his men, came to Abraham. And Abimelech spoke to Abraham concerning his servants. And Abraham rebuked Abimelech concerning the well of which his servants had robbed him. And Abimelech said to Abraham, As the Lord liveth who created the whole earth, I did not hear of the act which my servants did unto thy servants until this day. And Abraham took seven ewe lambs and gave them to Abimelech, saying, Take these, I pray thee, from my hands, that it may be a testimony for me that I dug this well. And Abimelech took the seven ewe lambs which Abraham had given to him, for he had also given him cattle and herds in abundance. And Abimelech swore to Abraham concerning the well, Therefore he called that well Beersheba, for there they both swore concerning it. And they both made a covenant in Beersheba, and Abimelech rose up with Phicol the captain of his host and all his men, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. And Abraham and all belonging to him dwelt in Beersheba, and he was in that land a long time. And Abraham planted a large grove in Beersheba, and he made to it four gates facing the four sides of the earth, and he planted a vineyard in it, so that if a traveler came to Abraham he entered any gate which was in his road, and remained there, and ate and drank, and satisfied himself, and then departed. For the house of Abraham was always open to the sons of men that passed and repassed, who came daily to eat and drink in the house of Abraham. And any man who had hunger, and came to Abraham's house, Abraham would give him bread that he might eat and drink and be satisfied. And any one that came naked to his house he would clothe with garments as he might choose, and give him silver and gold, and make known to him the Lord who had created him in the earth. Thus did Abraham all his life. And Abraham and his children and all belonging to him dwelt in Beersheba, and he pitched his tent as far as Hebron. And Abraham's brother Nahor and his father and all belonging to them dwelt in Haran, for they did not come with Abraham to the land of Canaan. And children were born to Nahor, which Milcah, the daughter of Haran, and sister to Sarah, Abraham's wife, bare to him. And these are the names of those that were born to him, Uz, Buz, Camul, Kased, Chazo, Pildash, Tidlaf, and Bethuel, being eight sons, these are the children of Milcah which she bare to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And Nahor had a concubine, and her name was Rumah. And she also bare to Nahor Zibak, Gashas, Tashas, and Macha, being four sons. And the children that were born to Nahor were twelve sons besides his daughters, and they also had children born to them in Haran. And the children of Uz, the firstborn of Nahor, were Abai, Charef, Gedin, Milos, and Deborah their sister. And the sons of Buz were Barachal, Namath, Shiva, and Madanu. And the sons of Camul were Aram, 
and Rechab. And the sons of Kesed were Anamalek, Meshai, Benan, and Yephi. And the sons of Chazo were Pildash, Mechai, and Ophir. And the sons of Pildash were Arud, Chamam, Merid, and Malach. And the sons of Yidlaf were Mushan, Kushan, and Mutsi. And the children of Bethuel were Sechar, Laban, and their sister Rebecca. These are the families of the children of Nahor that were born to them in Haran. And Aram, the son of Kemuel, and Rechab, his brother, went away from Haran. And they found a valley in the land by the river Euphrates. And they built a city there, and they called the name of the city after the name of Pethor, the son of Aram, that is, Aram Naharium, unto this day. And the children of Kesed also went to dwell where they could find a place. And they went, and they found a valley opposite to the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they there built themselves a city, and they called the name of the city Kesed, after the name of their father that is the land of Kastim unto this day. And the Kastim dwelt in that land, and they were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. And Terah, father of Nahor and Abraham, went and took another wife in his old age, and her name was Palila, and she conceived and bare him a son, and he called his name Zobah. And Terah lived twenty-five years after he begot Zobah. And Terah died in that year that was in the thirty-fifth year of the birth of Isaac, son of Abraham. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and he was buried in Haran. And Zobah, the son of Terah, lived thirty years, and he begat Aram, Achlis, and Merik. And Aram, son of Zobah, son of Terah, had three wives, and he begat twelve sons and three daughters. And the Lord gave to Aram, the son of Zobah, riches and possessions and abundance of cattle, and flocks and herds, and the man increased greatly. And Aram the son of Zobah and his brother, and all his household journeyed from Haran, and they went to dwell where they should find a place, for their property was too great to remain in Haran. For they could not stop in Haran together with their brethren, the children of Nahor. And Aram the son of Zobah went with his brethren, and they found a valley at a distance toward the eastern country, and they dwelt there. And they also built a city there, and they called the name thereof Aram, after the name of their eldest brother, that is Aram Zoba to this day. And Isaac the son of Abraham was growing up in those days, and Abraham his father taught him the way of the Lord to know the Lord, and the Lord was with him. And when Isaac was thirty-seven years old, Ishmael his brother was going about with him in the tent. And Ishmael boasted of himself to Isaac, saying, I was thirteen years old when the Lord spoke to my father to circumcise us, and I did according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to my father. And I gave my soul unto the Lord, and I did not transgress his word which he commanded my father. And Isaac answered Ishmael, saying, Why dost thou boast to me about this, about a little bit of thy flesh which thou didst take from thy body? concerning which the Lord commanded thee. As the Lord liveth, the God of my father Abraham, if the Lord should say unto my father, Take now thy son Isaac, and bring him up an offering before me, I would not refrain, but I would joyfully accede to it. And the Lord heard the word that Isaac spoke to Ishmael, and it seemed good in the sight of the Lord, and he thought to try Abraham in this matter. And the day arrived when the sons of God came and placed themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with the sons of God before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, What is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee, and remember thee when they require anything from thee. And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee, they sit at their ease, and forsake thee, and they remember thee no more. Hast thou seen Abraham, the son of Terah, who at first had no children, and he served thee, and erected altars to thee wherever he came, and he brought up offerings upon them, and he proclaimed thy name continually to all the children of the earth? And now that his son Isaac is born to him, he has forsaken thee. He has made a great feast for all the inhabitants of the land, and the Lord he has forgotten. 
For amidst all that he has done, he brought thee no offering, neither burnt offering nor peace offering, neither ox, lamb, nor goat of all that he killed on the day that his son was weaned. Even from the time of his son's birth till now, being thirty-seven years, he built no altar before thee, nor brought up any offering to thee. For he saw that thou didst give what he requested before thee, and he therefore forsook thee. And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou thus considered my servant Abraham? For there is none like him upon the earth, a perfect and an upright man before me, one that feareth God and avoideth evil. As I live, were I to say unto him, Bring up Isaac thy son before me, he would not withhold him from me, much more if I told him to bring up a burnt offering before me from his flocks or herds. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Speak then now unto Abraham as thou hast said, and thou wilt see whether he will not this day transgress and cast aside thy words. End of chapter 22 Chapter 23 of the Book of Jasher This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 23 At that time the word of the Lord came to Abraham, and he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said to him, Take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, even Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains which shall be shown to thee. For there wilt thou see a cloud in the glory of the Lord. And Abraham said within himself, How shall I separate my son Isaac from Sarah his mother, in order to bring him up for a burnt offering before the Lord? And Abraham came into the tent, and he sat before Sarah his wife, and he spoke these words to her. My son Isaac is grown up, and he has not for some time studied the service of his God. Now tomorrow I will go and bring him to Shem, and Eber his son, and there he will learn the ways of the Lord, for they will teach him to know the Lord, as well as to know that when he prayeth continually before the Lord, he will answer him. Therefore there he will know the way of serving the Lord as God. And Sarah said, Thou hast spoken well. Go, my Lord, and do unto him as thou hast said, but remove him not at a great distance from me. Neither let him remain there too long, for my soul is bound within his soul. And Abraham said unto Sarah, My daughter, let us pray to the Lord our God that he may do good with us. And Sarah took her son Isaac, and he abided all night with her, and she kissed and embraced him, and gave him instructions till morning. And she said to him, O my son, how can my soul separate itself from thee? And she still kissed him and embraced him, and she gave Abraham instructions concerning him. And Sarah said to Abraham, O my Lord, I pray thee, take heed of thy son, and place thine eyes over him, for I have no other son nor daughter but him. O forsake him not, if he be hungry, give him bread, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Do not let him go on foot, neither let him sit in the sun, neither let him go by himself in the road, neither force him from whatever he may desire, but do unto him as he may say to thee. And Sarah wept bitterly the whole night on account of Isaac, and she gave him instructions till morning. And in the morning Sarah selected a very fine and beautiful garment from those garments which she had in the house that Abimelech had given to her. And she dressed Isaac her son therewith, and she put a turban upon his head, and she enclosed a precious stone in the top of the turban. And she gave them provision for the road, and they went forth. And Isaac went with his father Abraham and some of their servants accompanied them to see them off the road. And Sarah went out with them, and she accompanied them upon the road to see them off, and they said to her, Return to the tent. And when Sarah heard the words of her son Isaac, she wept bitterly, and Abraham her husband wept with her, and their son wept with them a great weeping. Also those who went with them wept greatly. And Sarah caught hold of her son Isaac, and she held him in her arms, and she embraced him and continued to weep with him. And Sarah said, Who knoweth if after this day I shall ever see thee again? And they still wept together. Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac, and all those that accompanied them on the road wept with them. And Sarah afterward turned away from her son, weeping bitterly. And all her men, servants, and maidservants returned with her to the tent. 
And Abraham went with Isaac his son to bring him up as an offering before the Lord, as he had commanded him. And Abraham took two of his young men with him, Ishmael the son of Hagar, and Eliezer his servant, and they went together with them, and whilst they were walking in the road the young men spoke these words to themselves. And Ishmael said to Eliezer, Now my father Abraham is going with Isaac to bring him up for a burnt offering to the Lord as he commanded him. Now when he returneth he will give unto me all that he possesses to inherit after him, for I am his firstborn. And Eliezer answered Ishmael and said, Surely Abraham did cast thee away with thy mother, and swear that thou shouldst not inherit anything of all he possesses, and to whom will he give all that he has with all his treasures, but unto me his servant, who has been faithful in his house, who has served him night and day, and has done all that he desired me. To me will he bequeath at his death all that he possesses. And whilst Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac along the road, Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man, humble and of contrite spirit. And he approached Abraham and said to him, Art thou silly or brutish that thou goest to do this thing this day to thine only son? For God gave thee a son in thy latter days, in thy old age, and wilt thou go and slaughter him this day because he committed no violence? And wilt thou cause the soul of thine only son to perish from the earth? Dost thou not know and understand that this thing cannot be from the Lord? For the Lord cannot do unto man such evil upon earth to say to him, Go slaughter thy child. And Abraham heard this and knew that it was the word of Satan who endeavored to draw him aside from the way of the Lord. But Abraham would not hearken to the voice of Satan. And Abraham rebuked him so that he went away. And Satan returned and came to Isaac. And he appeared unto Isaac in the figure of a young man, comely and well favored. And he approached Isaac and said unto him, Dost thou not know and understand that thy old silly father bringeth thee to the slaughter this day for naught? Now therefore, my son, do not listen nor attend to him, for he is a silly old man, and let not thy precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from the earth. And Isaac heard this, and said unto Abraham, Hast thou heard, my father, that which this man has spoken? Even thus has he spoken. And Abraham answered his son Isaac, and said to him, Take heed of him, and do not listen to his words nor attend to him, for he is Satan endeavoring to draw us aside this day from the commands of God. And Abraham still rebuked Satan, and Satan went from them. And seeing he could not prevail over them, he hid himself from them, and he went and passed before them in the road. And he transformed himself to a large brook of water in the road. And Abraham and Isaac and his two young men reached that place, and they saw a brook large and powerful as the mighty waters. And they entered the brook and passed through it, and the waters at first reached their legs. And they went deeper in the brook, and the waters reached up to their necks, and they were all terrified on account of the water. And whilst they were going over the brook, Abraham recognized that place, and he knew that there was no water there before. And Abraham said to his son Isaac, I know this place in which there was no brook nor water. Now therefore it is this Satan who does all this to us to draw us aside this day from the commands of God. And Abraham rebuked him, and said unto him, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, be gone from us, for we go by the commands of God. And Satan was terrified at the voice of Abraham, and he went away from them, and the place again became dry land as it was at first. And Abraham went with Isaac toward the place that God had told him. And on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place at a distance which God had told him of. And a pillar of fire appeared to him that reached from the earth to heaven, and a cloud of glory upon the mountain, and the glory of the Lord was seen in the cloud. And Abraham said to Isaac, My son, dost thou see in that mountain, which we perceive at a distance, that which I see upon it? And Isaac answered and said unto his father, I see, and lo, a pillar of fire and a cloud, and the glory of the Lord is seen upon the cloud. And Abraham knew that his son Isaac was accepted before the Lord for a burnt offering. And Abraham said unto Eliezer and unto Ishmael his son, Do you also see that which we see upon the mountain which is at a distance? And they answered and said, We see nothing more than like the other mountains of the earth. And Abraham knew that they were not accepted before the Lord to go with them. And Abraham said to them, 
Abide ye here with the ass, whilst I and Isaac my son will go to yonder mount and worship there before the Lord, and then return to you. And Eliezer and Ishmael remained in that place, as Abraham had commanded. And Abraham took wood for a burnt offering and placed it upon his son Isaac. And he took the fire and the knife, and they both went to that place. And when they were going along, Isaac said to his father, Behold, I see here the fire and wood. And where then is the lamb that is to be the burnt offering before the Lord? And Abraham answered his son Isaac, saying, The Lord has made a choice of thee, my son, to be a perfect burnt offering instead of the lamb. And Isaac said unto his father, I will do all that the Lord spoke to thee with joy and cheerfulness of heart. And Abraham again said unto Isaac his son, Is there in thy heart any thought or counsel concerning this which is not proper? Tell me, my son, I pray thee, O my son, conceal it not from me. And Isaac answered his father Abraham and said unto him, O my father, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, there is nothing in my heart to cause me to deviate either to the right or to the left from the word that he has spoken to thee. Neither limb nor muscle has moved or stirred at this, nor is there in my heart any thought or evil counsel concerning this. But I am of joyful and cheerful heart in this matter, and I say, Blessed is the Lord who has this day chosen me to be a burnt offering before him. And Abraham greatly rejoiced at the words of Isaac, and they went on and came together to that place that the Lord had spoken of. And Abraham approached to build the altar in that place, and Abraham was weeping. And Isaac took stones and mortar until they had finished building the altar. And Abraham took the wood and placed it in order upon the altar which he had built. And he took his son Isaac and bound him in order to place him upon the wood which was upon the altar, to slay him for a burnt offering before the Lord. And Isaac said to his father, Bind me securely, and then place me upon the altar, lest I should turn and move, and break loose from the force of the knife upon my flesh, and thereby profane the burnt offering. And Abraham did so. And Isaac still said to his father, O my father, when thou shalt have slain me and burnt me for an offering, take with thee that which shall remain of my ashes to bring to Sarah my mother, and say to her, This is the sweet-smelling savor of Isaac. But do not tell her this if she should sit near a well, or upon any high place, lest she should cast her soul after me and die. And Abraham heard the words of Isaac, and he lifted up his voice and wept when Isaac spake these words. And Abraham's tears gushed down upon Isaac his son, and Isaac wept bitterly, and he said to his father, Hasten thou, O my father, and do with me the will of the Lord our God as he has commanded thee. And the hearts of Abraham and Isaac rejoiced at this thing which the Lord had commanded them. But the eye wept bitterly whilst the heart rejoiced. And Abraham bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar upon the wood. And Isaac stretched forth his neck upon the altar before his father. And Abraham stretched forth his hand to take the knife to slay his son as a burnt offering before the Lord. At that time the angels of mercy came before the Lord and spake to him concerning Isaac, saying, O Lord, Thou art a merciful and compassionate King over all that Thou hast created in heaven and in earth, and Thou supportest them all. Give therefore ransom and redemption instead of Thy servant Isaac, and pity and have compassion upon Abraham and upon Isaac his son, who are this day performing Thy commands. Hast Thou seen, O Lord, how Isaac the son of Abraham Thy servant is bound down to the slaughter like an animal? Now therefore let thy pity be roused for them, O Lord. At that time the Lord appeared unto Abraham and called to him from heaven and said unto him, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God in performing this act and in not withholding thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, a ram was caught in a thicket by his horns. That was the ram which the Lord God had created in the earth in the day that he made earth and heaven. For the Lord had prepared this ram from that day to be a burnt offering instead of Isaac. And this ram was advancing to Abraham when Satan caught hold of him and entangled his horns in the thicket, that he might not advance to Abraham, in order that Abraham might slay his son. 
And Abraham, seeing the ram advancing to him, and Satan withholding him, fetched him and brought him before the altar. And he loosened his son Isaac from his binding, and he put the ram in his stead. And Abraham killed the ram upon the altar, and brought it up as an offering in the place of his son Isaac. And Abraham sprinkled some of the blood of the ram upon the altar, and he exclaimed and said, This is in the place of my son, and may this be considered this day as the blood of my son before the Lord. And all that Abraham did on this occasion by the altar, he would exclaim and say, This is in the room of my son, and may it this day be considered before the Lord in the place of my son. And Abraham finished the whole of the service by the altar, and the service was accepted before the Lord, and was accounted as if it had been Isaac. And the Lord blessed Abraham and his seed on that day. And Satan went to Sarah, and he appeared to her in the figure of an old man, very humble and meek. And Abraham was yet engaged in the burnt offering before the Lord. And he said to her, Dost thou not know all the work that Abraham has made with thine only son this day? For he took Isaac and built an altar and killed him, and brought him up as a sacrifice upon the altar. And Isaac cried and wept before his father, but he looked not at him, neither did he have compassion over him. And Satan repeated these words, and he went away from her, and Sarah heard all the words of Satan, and she imagined him to be an old man from amongst the sons of men who had been with her son, and had come and told her these things. And Sarah lifted up her voice and wept and cried out bitterly on account of her son, and she threw herself upon the ground, and she cast dust upon her head, and she said, O oh, my son, Isaac, my son, O oh, that I had this day died instead of thee. And she continued to weep, and said, It grieves me for thee, O oh, my son, my son Isaac, O oh, that I had died this day in thy stead. And she still continued to weep, and said, it grieves me for thee, after that I have reared thee, and have brought thee up. Now my joy is turned into mourning over thee. I that had a longing for thee, and cried and prayed to God till I bear thee at ninety years old, and now hast thou served this day for the knife and the fire to be made an offering. But I console myself with thee, my son, in its being the word of the Lord, for thou didst perform the command of thy God. For who can transgress the word of our God, in whose hands is the soul of every living creature? Thou art just, O Lord our God, for all thy works are good and righteous. For I also am rejoiced with thy word which thou didst command, and whilst my eye weepeth bitterly, my heart rejoiceth. And Sarah laid her head upon the bosom of one of her handmaids, and she became as still as a stone. She afterward rose up and went about making inquiries till she came to Hebron. And she inquired of all those whom she met walking in the road, and no one could tell her what had happened to her son. And she came with her maid servants and men servants to Kiriath Arba, which is Hebron, and she asked concerning her son. And she remained there whilst she sent some of her servants to seek where Abraham had gone with Isaac. They went to seek him in the house of Shem and Eber, and they could not find him, and they sought throughout the land, and he was not there. And behold, Satan came to Sarah in the shape of an old man, and he came and stood before her. And he said unto her, I spoke falsely unto thee, for Abraham did not kill his son, and he is not dead. And when she heard the word, her joy was so exceedingly violent on account of her son, that her soul went out through joy. She died and was gathered to her people. And when Abraham had finished his service, he returned with his son Isaac to his young men. And they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and they came home. And Abraham sought for Sarah, and could not find her. And he made inquiries concerning her, and they said unto him, She went as far as Hebron to seek you both where you had gone, for thus was she informed. And Abraham and Isaac went to her to Hebron, and when they found that she was dead, they lifted up their voices and wept bitterly over her. And Isaac fell upon his mother's face and wept over her, and he said, O oh, my mother, my mother, how hast thou left me, and where hast thou gone? O oh, how, how hast thou left me? And Abraham and Isaac wept greatly, and all their servants wept with them on account of Sarah, and they mourned over her a great and heavy mourning. End of chapter 23 Read by C. J. Plogue Chapter 24 of the Book of Jasher 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 24 And the life of Sarah was one hundred and twenty-seven years, and Sarah died. And Abraham rose up from before his dead to seek a burial place to bury his wife Sarah. And he went and spoke to the children of Heth, the inhabitants of the land, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you in your land. Give me a possession of a burial place in your land, that I may bury my dead from before me. And the children of Heth said unto Abraham, Behold, the land is before thee. In the choice of our sepulchres bury thy dead, for no man shall withhold thee from burying thy dead. And Abraham said unto them, If you are agreeable to this, go and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zokar, requesting that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which is in the end of his field, and I will purchase it of him for whatever he desire for it. And Ephraim dwelt among the children of Heth, and they went and called for him, and he came before Abraham. And Ephraim said unto Abraham, Behold, all thou requirest thy servant will do. And Abraham said, No, but I will buy the cave and the field which thou hast for value, in order that it may be for a possession of a burial place for ever. And Ephraim answered and said, Behold, the field and the cave are before thee. Give whatever thou desirest. And Abraham said, Only at full value will I buy it from thy hand, and from the hands of those that go in at the gate of thy city, and from the hand of thy seed for ever. And Ephron and all his brethren heard this. And Abraham weighed to Ephron four hundred shekels of silver in the hands of Ephron, and in the hands of all his brethren. And Abraham wrote this transaction, and he wrote it and testified it with four witnesses. And these are the names of the witnesses, Amagal, son of Abishna, the Hittite, Adakoram, son of Ashanak, the Hivite, Abdon, son of Akram, the Gomerite, Bagdal, son of Abudish, the Zidonite. And Abraham took the book of the purchase and placed it in his treasures, and these are the words that Abraham wrote in the book, namely, that the cave and the field Abraham bought from Ephron the Hittite, and from his seed, and from those that go out of his city, and from their seed for ever, are to be a purchase to Abraham, and to his seed, and to those that go forth from his loins, for a possession of a burial place for ever. And he put a signet to it, and testified it with witnesses. And the field and the cave that was in it, and all that place were made sure unto Abraham, and unto his seed after him, from the children of Heth. Behold, it is before Mamre in Hebron, which is in the land of Canaan. And after this Abraham buried his wife Sarah there, and that place and all its boundary became to Abraham and unto his seed for a possession of a burial place. And Abraham buried Sarah with pomp, as observed at the interment of kings, and she was buried in very fine and beautiful garments. And at her bier was Shem, his sons Eber and Abimelech, together with Anar, Ashkol, and Mamre, and all the grandees of the land followed her bier. And the days of Sarah were one hundred and twenty-seven years, and she died. And Abraham made a great and heavy mourning, and he performed the rites of mourning for seven days. And all the inhabitants of the land comforted Abraham and Isaac his son on account of Sarah. And when the days of their mourning passed by, Abraham sent away his son Isaac, and he went to the house of Shem and Eber to learn the ways of the Lord and his instructions, and Abraham remained there three years. At that time Abraham rose up with all his servants, and they went and returned homeward to Beersheba, and Abraham and all his servants remained in Beersheba. And at the revolution of the year Abimelech the king of the Philistines died in that year. He was one hundred and ninety-three years old at his death, and Abraham went with his people to the land of the Philistines, and they comforted the whole household and all his servants, and he then turned and went home. And it was after the death of Abimelech that the people of Gerar took ben Malik his son, and he was only twelve years old, and they made him king in the place of his father. And they called his name Abimelech, after the name of his father, for thus was it their custom to do in Gerar. And Abimelech reigned instead of Abimelech, his father, and he sat upon his throne. And Lot the son Haran also died in those days, in the thirty-ninth year of the life of Isaac, 
and all the days that Lot lived were one hundred and forty years, and he died. And these are the children of Lot that were born to him by his daughters. The name of the firstborn was Moab, and the name of the second was Benami. And the two sons of Lot went and took themselves wives from the land of Canaan, and they bare children to them, and the children of Moab were Ed, Maan, Tarsus, and Canvel. Four sons. These are the fathers to the children of Moab unto this day. And all the families of the children of Lot went to dwell wherever they should light upon, for they were fruitful and increased abundantly. And they went and built themselves cities in the land where they dwelt, and they called the names of their cities which they built after their own names. And Nahor the son of Terah, brother to Abraham, died in those days in the fortieth year of the life of Isaac. And all the days of Nahor were one hundred and seventy-two years, and he died and was buried in Haran. And when Abraham heard that his brother was dead, he grieved sadly, and he mourned over his brother many days. And Abraham called for Eliezer his head servant to give him orders concerning his house, and he came and stood before him. And Abraham said to him, Behold, I am old, I do not know the day of my death, for I am advanced in days. Now therefore rise up, go forth, and do not take a wife for my son from this place and from this land, from the daughters of the Canaanites amongst whom we dwell. But go to my land, and to my birthplace, and take from thence a wife for my son. And the Lord God of heaven and earth, who took me from my father's house, and brought me to this place, and said unto me, To thy seed will I give this land for an inheritance for ever. He will send his angel before thee, and prosper thy way, that thou mayest obtain a wife for my son, from my family, and from my father's house. And the servant answered his master Abraham, and said, Behold, I go to thy birthplace, and to thy father's house, and take a wife for thy son from there. But if the woman be not willing to follow me to this land, shall I take thy son back to the land of thy birthplace? And Abraham said unto him, Take heed that thou bring not my son hither again, for the Lord before whom I have walked, he will send his angel before thee and prosper thy way. And Eliezer did as Abraham ordered him. And Eliezer swore unto Abraham his master upon this matter. And Eliezer rose up and took ten camels of the camels of his master, and ten men from his master's servants with him. And they rose up and went to Haran, the city of Abraham and Nahor in order to fetch a wife for Isaac the son of Abraham. And whilst they were gone, Abraham sent to the house of Shem and Eber, and they brought from thence his son Isaac. And Isaac came home to his father's house to Beersheba, whilst Eliezer and his men came to Haran. And they stopped in the city by the watering place, and he made his camels kneel down by the water, and they remained there. And Eliezer, Abraham's servant, prayed and said, O God of Abraham, my master, Send me, I pray thee, good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master, that thou shalt appoint this day a wife for my master's son from his family. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Eliezer for the sake of his servant Abraham, and he happened to meet with the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, brother to Abraham, and Eliezer came to her house. And Eliezer related to them all his concerns, and that he was Abraham's servant, and they greatly rejoiced at him. And they all blessed the Lord who brought this thing about, and they gave him Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, for a wife for Isaac. And the young woman was of very comely appearance. She was a virgin, and Rebekah was ten years old in those days. And Bethuel and Laban and his children made a feast on that night, and Eliezer and his men came and ate and drank and rejoiced there on that night. And Eliezer rose up in the morning, he and the men that were with him, and he called to the whole household of Bethuel, saying, Send me away that I may go to my master. And they rose up and sent away Rebekah and her nurse Deborah, the daughter of Uz, and they gave her silver and gold, men servants and maid servants, and they blessed her. And they sent Eliezer away with his men, and the servants took Rebekah, and he went and returned to his master to the land of Canaan. And Isaac took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he brought her into the tent. And Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of his uncle Bethuel, for a wife. End of chapter 24
Chapter Twenty Five of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twenty Five. And it was at that time that Abraham again took a wife in his old age, and her name was Keturah from the land of Canaan, and she bare unto him Zimrah, Jokshan, Midan, Midian, Yishbak, and Shuach, being six sons. And the children of Zemran were Abihan, Molich, and Merim. And the sons of Yokshan were Sheba and Dedan. And the sons of Medan were Amida, Joab, Gochi, Elisha, and Nothach. And the sons of Midian were Epha, Epher, Chanok, Abida, and Elda. And the sons of Yishbak were Makiro, Boyodua, and Tater. And the sons of Shuach were Bildad, Mamdad, Munan, and Meban. All these are the families of the children of Keturah, the Canaanitish woman, which she bare unto Abraham the Hebrew. And Abraham sent all these away, and he gave them gifts, and they went away from his son Isaac to dwell wherever they should find a place. And all these went to the mountain at the east, and they built themselves six cities in which they dwelt unto this day. But the children of Sheba and Dedan, children of Yokshan with their children, did not dwell with their brethren in their cities, and they journeyed and encamped in the countries and wildernesses unto this day. And the children of Midian, son of Abraham, went to the east of the land of Cush, and they there found a large valley in the eastern country, and they remained there, and built a city, and they dwelt therein. That is the land of Midian unto this day. And Midian dwelt in the city which he built, he and his five sons, and all belonging to him. And these are the names of the sons of Midian according to their names in their cities, Ephah, Epher, Chanok, Abida, and Elda. And the sons of Ephah were Methach, Mishar, Avi, and Zanua, and the sons of Epher were Ephron, Zur, Alaron, and Medan, and the sons of Chanok were Ruel, Rechem, Azi, Elioshub, and Alad, and the sons of Abida were Chur, Melud, Karui, Mokri, and the sons of Elda were Miker, and Reba, and Melchaya, and Gabal. These are the names of the Midianites according to their families, and afterward the families of Midian spread throughout the land of Midian. And these are the generations of Ishmael the son of Abraham, whom Hagar, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. And Ishmael took a wife from the land of Egypt, and her name was Reba. The same is Meribah. And Reba bare unto Ishmael Neboioth, Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, and their sister Bosmath. And Ishmael cast away his wife Reba, and she went from him and returned to Egypt to the house of her father, and she dwelt there, for she had been very bad in the sight of Ishmael, and in the sight of his father Abraham. And Ishmael afterward took a wife from the land of Canaan, and her name was Makuth, and she bare unto him Nishma, Duma, Masa, Shadad, Tima, Yitar, Nafish, and Kedma. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names, being twelve princes according to their nations. And the families of Ishmael afterward spread forth, and Ishmael took his children and all the property that he had gained, together with the souls of his household and all belonging to him, and they went to dwell where they should find a place. And they went and dwelt near the wilderness of Paran, and their dwelling was from Havilah unto Shur, that is before Egypt as thou comest toward Assyria. And Ishmael and his sons dwelt in the land, and they had children born to them, and they were fruitful and increased abundantly. And these are the names of the sons of Neboioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, Mend, Send, and Maon. And the sons of Kedar were Elaan, Kizem, Shamad, and Eli. And the sons of Adbeel were Chamad and Jabin. And the sons of Mibsam were Obadiah, Abedmelech, and Yush. These are the families of the children of Reba, the wife of Ishmael. 
and the sons of Mishma, the son of Ishmael, were Shamua, Zacharian, and Obed. And the sons of Duma were Kazed, Eli, Machmad, and Ahmed. And the sons of Masa were Milan, Mula, and Ibadidan. And the sons of Chidad were Azar, Minzar, and Abedmelech. And the sons of Tima were Seir, Sedan, and Yakol. And the sons of Yeter were Merith, Yaish, Alyo, and Pakoth. And the sons of Mafish were Ibed Tamed, Abayasaf, and Mir. And the sons of Kedma were Kalib, Takhti, and Omir. These were the children of Makuth, the wife of Ishmael, according to their families. All these are the families of Ishmael, according to their generations, and they dwelt in those lands wherein they had built themselves cities unto this day. And Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the wife of Abraham's son Isaac, was barren in those days, and she had no offspring. And Isaac dwelt with his father in the land of Canaan, and the Lord was with Isaac. And Arpashad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, died in those days, in the forty-eighth year of the life of Isaac. And all the days that Arpashad lived were four hundred and thirty-eight years, and he died. End of chapter 25、chapter、26 of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 26 And in the fifty-ninth year of the life of Isaac the son of Abraham, Rebekah his wife was still barren in those days. And Rebekah said unto Isaac, Truly I have heard, my lord, that thy mother Sarah was barren in her days until my lord Abraham thy father prayed for her and she conceived by him. Now therefore stand up, pray thou also to God, and he will hear thy prayer and remember us through his mercies. And Isaac answered his wife Rebekah, saying, Abraham has already prayed for me to God to multiply his seed. Now therefore this barrenness must proceed to us from thee. And Rebekah said unto him, But arise now thou also, and pray that the Lord may hear thy prayer and grant me children. And Isaac hearkened to the words of his wife. And Isaac and his wife rose up and went to the land of Moriah to pray there and to seek the Lord. And when they had reached that place, Isaac stood up and prayed to the Lord on account of his wife, because she was barren. And Isaac said, O Lord God of heaven and earth, whose goodness and mercies fill the earth, thou who didst take my father from his father's house and from his birthplace, and didst bring him unto this land, and didst say unto him, To thy seed will I give the land, and thou didst promise him, and didst declare unto him, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand of the sea, now may thy words be verified which thou didst speak unto my father. For thou art the Lord our God, our eyes are toward thee to give us seed of men, as thou didst promise us. For thou art the Lord our God, and our eyes are directed toward thee only. And the Lord heard the prayer of Isaac the son of Abraham, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And in about seven months after the children struggled together within her, and it pained her greatly that she was wearied on account of them. And she said to all the women who were then in the land, did such a thing happen to you as it has to me? And they said unto her, No. And she said unto them, Why am I alone in this amongst all the women that were upon earth? And she went to the land of Moriah to seek the Lord on account of this. And she went to Shem and Eber his son to make inquiries of them in this matter, and that they should seek the Lord in this thing respecting her. And she also asked Abraham to seek and inquire of the Lord about all that had befallen her. And they all inquired of the Lord concerning this matter, and they brought her word from the Lord, and told her, Two children are in thy womb, and two nations shall rise from them, and one nation shall be stronger than the other, and the greater shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were completed, she knelt down, and behold, there were twins in her womb, as the Lord had spoken to her. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and all the people of the land called his name Esau, saying that this one was made complete from the womb. And after that came his brother, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, 
therefore they called his name Jacob. And Isaac the son of Abraham was sixty years old when he begat them. And the boys grew up to their fifteenth year, and they came amongst the society of men. Esau was a designing and deceitful man, and an expert hunter in the field. And Jacob was a man perfect and wise, dwelling in tents, feeding flocks, and learning the instructions of the Lord and the commands of his father and mother. And Isaac and the children of his household dwelt with his father Abraham in the land of Canaan, as God had commanded them. And Ishmael the son of Abraham went with his children, and all belonging to them, and they returned there to the land of Havilah, and they dwelt there. And all the children of Abraham's concubines went to dwell in the land of the east, for Abraham had sent them away from his son, and had given them presents, and they went away. And Abraham gave all that he had to his son Isaac, and he also gave him all his treasures. And he commanded him, saying, Dost thou not know and understand, The Lord is God in heaven and in earth, and there is no other beside him? And it was he who took me from my father's house, and from my birthplace, and gave me all the delights upon earth, who delivered me from the counsel of the wicked, for in him did I trust. And he brought me to this place, and he delivered me from ur -Kastim. And he said unto me, To thy seed will I give all these lands, and they shall inherit them when they keep my commandments, my statutes and my judgments, that I have commanded thee, and which I shall command them. Now therefore, my son, hearken to my voice, and keep the commandments of the Lord thy God which I commanded thee. Do not turn from the right way, either to the right or to the left, in order that it may be well with thee and thy children after thee for ever. And remember the wonderful works of the Lord and his kindness that he has shown toward us, in having delivered us from the hands of our enemies. And the Lord our God caused them to fall into our hands. And now therefore keep all that I have commanded thee, and turn not away from the commandments of thy God, and serve none beside him, in order that it may be well with thee and thy seed after thee. And teach thou thy children and thy seed the instruction of the Lord and his commandments, and teach them the upright way in which they should go, in order that it may be well with them for ever. And Isaac answered his father and said unto him, That which my Lord has commanded, that will I do, and I will not depart from the commandments of the Lord my God. I will keep all that he commanded me. And Abraham blessed his son Isaac, and also his children. And Abraham taught Jacob the instruction of the Lord and his ways. And it was at that time that Abraham died, in the fifteenth year of the life of Jacob and Esau the son of Isaac. And all the days of Abraham were one hundred and seventy-five years, and he died, and was gathered to his people in good old age, old and satisfied with days. And Isaac and Ishmael his sons buried him. And when the inhabitants of Canaan heard that Abraham was dead, they all came with their kings and princes and all their men to bury Abraham. And all the inhabitants of the land of Haran, and all the families of the house of Abraham, and all the princes and grandees, and the sons of Abraham by the concubines, all came when they heard of Abraham's death. And they requited Abraham's kindness, and comforted Isaac his son. And they buried Abraham in the cave which he bought from Ephron the Hittite, and his children for the possession of a burial place. And all the inhabitants of Canaan, and all those who had known Abraham, wept for Abraham a whole year, and men and women mourned over him. And all the little children and all the inhabitants of the land wept on account of Abraham, for Abraham had been good to them all, and because he had been upright with God and men. And there arose not a man who feared God like unto Abraham, for he had feared his God from his youth, and had served the Lord, and had gone in all his ways during his life, from his childhood to the day of his death. And the Lord was with him, and delivered him from the counsel of Nimrod, and his people. And when he made war with the four kings of Elam, he conquered them. And he brought all the children of the earth to the service of God, and he taught them the ways of the Lord, and caused them to know the Lord. And he formed a grove, and he planted a vineyard therein, and he had always prepared in his tent meat and drink to those that passed through the land, that they might satisfy themselves in his house. And the Lord God delivered the whole earth on account of Abraham. And it was after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac and his children. And the Lord was with Isaac as he had been with his father Abraham, for Isaac kept all the commandments of the Lord, as Abraham his father had commanded him. 
He did not turn to the right or to the left from the right path which his father had commanded him. End of chapter 26